This is the Gaumont British News, presenting the world to the world. In all the chief towns and villages of Abyssinia, preparations for war are proceeding. In the streets and public squares, every male citizen appears armed with a rifle, for every one is a potential soldier. Pasha, chief of the Ethiopian general staff, posed for the Goma British News camera as he sat at work on the balcony of his headquarters while troops were assembling in the streets below. This is Hara, where goodbyes were said as brother left brother to advance towards the frontier. Abyssinia virtually a nation in arms, it is comforting to hear from the British Minister, Sir Sidney Barton, a complete assurance as to the safety of our own countrymen in the danger zone. The Emperor and the Ethiopian government have given me the most categorical assurances that every possible step will be taken to ensure the safety of foreigners residing in Ethiopia. The 25th anniversary of the Eucharistic Congress was held in Montreal with a parade two miles long and 100,000 people in attendance at the celebrations. From the army field in Illinois, Uncle Sam sent up his latest creation, the biggest non-rigid airship in the world. 230 feet long, it is able to cruise at a speed of 90 miles an hour. Down on the Oxyoke Ranch, they're holding a rodeo, all on their own. But it's all in miniature. Little boys and girls on little steers showing they can fall off as well as any full-grown cow. Please, please, please. Coming out on runaway! <laughs> Long Island, New York! <laughs> These kids are tough. Not content with one fall, they come up for more. Washington is going all out for a grand improvement scheme. It'll come as a big surprise to a good many people to know that anything in America can be improved. But anyhow, the object is a park between the Capitol and the monument. Two chimneys having to be felled. One goes down. Two goes down. And the sun goes down. It seems that winter is really on the way when we hear that fanfare echoing from the precincts of London's Guild Hall. For this is the election of London's new Lord Mayor for the coming year. Sir Stephen Killick's year of office draws to a close and the new rule begins with a welcome to Sir Percy Vincent. The 30th annual band contest brought to London bands from all over Britain with music to bring joy to all who heard it. particular interest in this return of the King and Queen to Buckingham Palace from Balmoral, for His Majesty returned to give, in Privy Council, formal consent to the wedding of the Duke of Gloucester and Lady Alice Scott. <laughs> Miss Pamela Kingsmill was a bride radiant in white and silver brocade at St. Marylebone Church for her wedding to Mr. Frank Furlong. The bridegroom, of course, wore the traditional uniform of men at such functions, and the eight bridesmaids wore white brocade. This is obviously Mr. Furlong's lucky year, for in the spring he rode Reynolds Town to victory in the greatest steeplechase in the world, the Grand National.
400 feet down the sheer face of Speaton Cliff near Filey and Bridlington, the hull trawler Skegness lay immovably wedged upon the rocks. Her entire crew of 11 souls had perished in the storm which rammed her aground at the base of the cliff. Down south, off the treacherous lizard, the clan Malcolm of Glasgow suffered a similar fate in thick fog. Some of her crew were taken off early. Some can be seen still moving about on deck in the comparative calm of the following day. Following the amazing pictures in our last issue of the Great Conflagration at Colonial Wharf, this is the continuation of the blaze that saw the clock round many times through day and night. Walls and other debris fell at intervals with thunderous crashes. Days after the fire started, it was still burning, still engaging the attention of a hundred firemen who fought heroically in relays to subdue the flames. The surrounding streets were transformed into rivers of rubber and soot. The whole district lay black and grimy beneath an oily cloak while cascades of water flowed from hose to warehouse and from warehouse to street. Only the superb efficiency of our modern fire brigades has kept this costly disaster from involving half London. On the 110th anniversary of the opening of the first English railway, when George Stevenson's locomotive number one covered 26 miles, at an average speed of eight miles an hour, the Silver Jubilee, drawn by the streamlined Silver Link, left King's Cross. She is to run regularly between London and Newcastle, and on her trial trip, she attained a record speed of 112 miles an hour. Speed, comfort, and a wild, modern beauty. <laughs> 